Yo, yo, yo. Too Loud Crew. We back at it with another video. This is the Me You Mini Plus review. Stick around for the giveaway details. Let's go. This is Too Loud Tech, and I'm finally back from vacation. I want to apologize for being absent for as long as I was, and I plan on next time pre recording some videos to edit and upload while I'm on the road. I'm new to this, so I appreciate all of your support while I transition into content creation. It's more than just having fun. Just a heads up, the Me U Mini Plus will probably be referred to as just the Me U Mini a lot during this review, but just so you know, I'm still speaking about the Plus. Without further ado, let's get this party started. So this is the Me U Mini Plus. In 2024, do I think that this is a viable option or a competitive option? And I'd have to say right from the beginning, still yes um i know that the rg 35 xx plus has came out and as long as this remains under the price of the rg 35 xx i still think that this is the best deal for the money i'm going to talk about a few things in this review like size and portability i'm going to have some size comparisons i'm going to talk about the operating system the buttons the build quality the my preferred way of syncing games. I'm gonna give you guys some disclaimers. I'll share some giveaway information, gameplay videos, and who I think this device is for. Now as far as size and portability goes, that is my favorite feature of this device. Just the compactness, being able to throw this in my pocket, it's just it's so convenient. I carry a lot of stuff with me. I don't wear cargo pants or shorts. Uh, so I generally have four pockets with a little change pocket, you know, because I generally wear jeans. And um, for that, this comes in clutch for sure. Um, the closest competitor I've had to it was the RG35XX. I do have a few small gripes with that device, and that's why this device outdid it. To me, the rear buttons on the RG35XX are not flush with the device like this. And this one is just a bit shorter. And for me, daily, I mean, I'll share with you guys here. I generally carry my Beats Buds, maybe some chapstick, a knife, keys with a flashlight my wallet and my iPhone 13 Pro non max because I didn't want a phone filling up my pocket anymore so it is actually the first phone that I've gone with a normal size in years and the only reason that I use an iPhone over Android is because of family so let me get some of this stuff back out of the way now because I carry all that stuff with me compactness is very important to me so generally i will have the miu mini in my pocket alone because i don't use screen protectors I'm, I'm pretty fragile with my devices so that doesn't concern me much um i have tried the rg35 xx it's not un undoable it's not unmanageable just it wasn't my preference to some who have a little less snug pockets and i don't wear the tightest pants you know, it probably worked for them. But for me, it just was not the most comfortable for all day carrying. And um, with that being said, I'll, I'll give a bit of a size comparison here. Actually, I'll bring in a few devices to compare. And the first device I'll bring in will be the, one second guys, would be the RG35XX. This is my RG35XX. I know that the Plus just came out. I opted to not go for the Plus, being that it was the same in size and shape. And I already have the 35XX. So I'm currently waiting for the RG35XXH horizontal, because that will give me a little something different. But here, if I line them up, you can see 
you know, there's just a bit of a difference. And depending on the pants or the shorts I'm wearing, it tends to stick out of my pocket a little bit or just be more prone to falling out of my pocket when I'm getting in and out of the car. So for me, that was kind of a drawback. For others, it may not be. Also, if you look at the rear buttons, they cause the device to sit at an angle. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it much, but one is flat, one is not. So that, that was a thing for me. But I will say that them being flat on here is a bit of a double-edged sword, and we'll get to that later. So we're gonna move on, and I'm gonna compare it to a few more devices here. I'll get these games out of the way here. And the next device that I'll bring in will be the, let's see, let's go with the R36S. Okay, so we got the R36S here. I'll move the 35XX over so we can get a size comparison. And between the MiU Mini and the R36S, it's a large size comparison. This is a more powerful device, but it does not have Wi-Fi. For some, that will matter. For some, it really shouldn't. Just depends on your use case. Don't, don't be sold on features that you will not use because you're just spending money for no reason. I find that for most people, the standard RG35XX is more than manageable, being that they're not connecting online, they're not syncing with other devices, they're save files. Okay, next, since I brought it up earlier, I will show the Razer Kishi, which I've used in my pocket and with my phone. And as you can see, just the controller itself is bigger than the MiU Mini. And this still needs my device inserted. So needless to say, that didn't work for me either. Another device I would like to bring in Something you guys would be more familiar with. I have a 2DS wet 2, <laughs> 2DS. I was gonna say 2DS wedge, but you guys know what I mean. A lot of people refer to this as a cheese wedge. So weird shape. It's not the same as the clamshell 3DSs. I actually gravitated toward this because I have children. I didn't want to deal with the hinge being broken. I actually had a 3DS for a long time. Uh, opted to get rid of it at some point. So that's the MiU next to a 2DS. Next, I will bring in the RG353V. This is my probably my second favorite device right now. Um, this is very comfortable to play on. I mean, it's still a vertical at the end of the day. So ergonomics are not the same as you would get on a modern console or controller. It's just not, but still, it's more than capable of playing. This has Android as well. But as far as portability, as far as compactness, the MiU Mini is not even close. This is still the plus. And one more, the PSP, as you see, it's a lot longer. And when you're shoving this in your pocket, it's just not the same. On top of that, you don't really see that many people carrying a PSP. It's really niche now. And just one last comparison next to my iPhone. The MiU Mini Plus. So, that's my first favorite feature of the MiU Mini Plus is the size and portability. It really, really means a lot to me. And the next thing I would like to go on to is um, just this OS. So my MiU Mini is using Onion OS and I cannot complain about Onion OS. It has to be one of my favorite Linux based uh, operating systems for retro handhelds. The simplicity, the smoothness is just very good. I like a lot of features on here. The game switcher, being able to just tap that button there and go between games that I've been recently playing. 
it's so convenient. It's quick, snappy, brings you right into whatever you were last doing, right where you were. So as you can see, I was in Kirby here, and uh, just brings me right back to it, which is, I love that feature. I, I cannot, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that feature, especially for somebody who has to, sometimes at a, no, at a moment's notice, put down my game and grab my child or whatever's necessary at that time. That feature is very convenient for me. My next favorite feature on Onion OS would be the themes. Um, right now I'm using Tech Dweeb's theme. And real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to Tech Dweeb. I think that um, his content is amazing. I think that uh, it is not easily replicatable. Replicatable. <laughs> and um, it's very authentic. I enjoy it. So I use Tech Dweeb's theme until I could get my own, of course. And Onion OS comes with 23 of these themes by default. And um, they also, there's a website online that you can go on to and download more themes. And I'll share a link to that in the description. But here I'll cut through and just give you a glance of some of the themes in here. Yeah, so 23 by default. They have like some old MS DOS type themes, some Super Nintendo style themes, Onion OS, some Pac Man, some PlayStation type themes, Game Boy. What is this? Wii U? I mean, at the end of the day, 23 themes by default is a pretty decent amount. Some of the other features that I appreciate on Onion OS would have to be the activity tracker. In the activity tracker, mind you, I, I recently wiped out my MiU Mini to try some other operating systems, so my activity is not that high right now, but I have at least put a minimum of uh, 50 hours game time on this device. But I do like the activity tracker because it can track my gameplay in the amount of time played, average play time, number of plays per title. I, I find little information like that to be helpful, especially with doing reviews and stuff. Then I can give accurate amounts of time. Unfortunately, with this one, like I said, I had uh, not screenshotted what I had done prior and I wiped it out to try some other operating systems. So. Another feature of Onion OS that I really appreciate is um, the file explorer. Just being able to go in here and manage my files or check what I have inside is just super convenient. You get in here, you can check out whatever you need to check out, check your ROM, see what you have. And then to exit, I think you just push the game switcher. Yes, game switcher button and go down to quit. So that's pretty convenient. We also have a gallery. For those of you that want to view your screenshots or music player if you want to get some jams in. And we have Onion OTA Updater. Random Game Selector, which is pretty self-explanatory. Video Player, if we want to save some videos. And that's always nice, being that we got a headphone jack if we want to listen in private or don't want to bother people around us. Another thing is that um, you can also get the beta updates right here from the Onion OTA update. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot now because I have not updated this to the latest beta. And I would like to give that a shot with y'all here. So let's go ahead and select that beta. And there is there is an update available. It's the 4.30. I'm gonna hit A to continue. And then I'll hit yes. And it seems that it's going to take about five to six minutes. So I'm going to allow it the time to finish the beta update. And I'll be back with you guys as it finishes. Well, as you can see, my beta version is now up to date. And with that, I should now be able to go up to the package manager. 
And inside the package manager, I believe we should now have native Nintendo DS and Pico 8 emulators. There we go, Drastic. And these are all user preference. Pick what you want, install it to your system, depending on the games that you play, the systems that you play. I try to keep all of my all of my emulator systems running on the same emulators just because I noticed that sometimes with save files or save states it really is emulator dependent. I'm gonna go ahead and install Pico 8. Then we'll hit start and start. There we go. We have Nintendo DS. And we have Pico 8. Seems that Tech Dweeb's theme does not have an icon for the NDS yet, which is okay. Getting a little ahead of myself though. Prior to getting into the games here, I do want to. Actually, I'll run a game while I talk about it. Now I'd like to go over the buttons and how they're feeling and why I ultimately said that, you know, the buttons being flat on the rear is a double-edged sword. So, we'll play a little bit of Mega Man here while we talk about it. But as far as the D-pad goes, it feels really good. It's soft, it's quiet, it feels a little mushy, kind of like a Super Nintendo controller. Not, not to the same extent though but it is good and the face buttons also are good i don't get any friction when traveling between any other buttons they push it nice the game switcher button is it's responsive has a vibration when you push it the power and the volume keys are standard affair you got your usb port you got your micro SD slot and your three and a half millimeter millimeter headphone jack. Apologize about that. And then to the rear, we have these triggers here. And as you can see, they're pretty flush, which is why I like to carry it. But during extended gameplay, you kind of have to do like a wrap around, I guess, like a claw. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a wrap around, it's a claw. And, um, you know, for extended game sessions, it could be a little bit a pain. But for 10, 15, even 20 minute game sessions, it's not that big a deal. Man, guys, I was fighting this old guy last night. And <laughs> he was whooping up on me, man. Haven't played this game in years. Yeah. All right, we're going to not embarrass ourselves anymore with that the screen is beautiful it's vibrant looks great no complaints there I would assume this glass is pretty soft it's not gonna be like one of your cell phone glasses with the Gorilla Glass or anything like that so I'll keep that in mind and if you are not as gentle with your devices as me, I'd probably go ahead and throw that screen protector on and not even mess around. One of my next favorite things about the Onion OS and the MiU Mini is being able to run Sync Thing, which if I go into stuff here, you can see I did have to sideload Sync Thing through an SD card. If any of you guys are interested in it, I'll help you and make a video. And if I see it in the comments that you guys really want it, I'll go ahead and push that out. Um, what Sync Thing does though, is allow me to sync my games across devices. So I use multiple different devices to get my retro games in, whether that be PC, the Legion Go, my Mac, Whatever it is, I just don't like to always have to start the game over, so Sync Thing is killer when it comes to that for sure. It's a manual set setup, and it is uh, what I would assume to be pretty secure 
and private because you're hosting it all on your own network. It's not a cloud server or anything like that. You set a place on your hard drive where you'd like all your saves to be and it syncs it between there. So that is another one of my features that are a go-to for the MiU Mini. I like Aladdin. <laughs> I used to play this when I was a kid, and I think that's part of the fun of having these devices, right? Is that nostalgia, getting to go back and relive those moments. It's just, man, the first time I got one of these retro handhelds and I picked one of those old games that I like to play. I don't know if it was Super Mario World or maybe it was even Aladdin. And I opened it, and my wife was sitting next to me, and I just, man, I was so full of joy. I was so... It like it put me where I was when I last played it. And that was cool. That was well worth it. Um, I do wanna make a quick disclaimer for those of you who are using this device with Wi-Fi. If your Wi-Fi happens to use any special characters, that being like the at uh, icon, the dollar sign, exclamation mark, underscores, anything like that, this device's Wi-Fi chip, for some reason, doesn't really like to play nicely with that. So that's something that I would definitely keep in mind. You may want to just fix your Wi-Fi password to have just numbers and letters. Because, yeah, I've ran into a few issues with that in the beginning where I had to change my Wi-Fi password. And I know that's not optimal for most, but it's a small workaround for the time being hopefully in one of these updates me you will get around i mean well not me you because we're using custom firmware here but the onion team would get around to uh to getting that sorted out for us Ooh, no <laughs> So something I'm really excited to be able to do with you guys is, um, I don't know if you guys happen to see those buttons up there, but uh, let's talk about that for a minute, shall we? So this is another MiU Mini, and um, I'm going to give this away to one of you guys. I just, I want, I want to share with you guys and... When I happen to have a spare of an extra device just sitting around, I'd like to just gift it to somebody else who will enjoy it instead of just letting it sit and collect dust. So that's what we're gonna do with this Spare Me You Mini here. I have the box, it is new. I only opened it to verify that everything was working because I would hate to ship out a broken device to somebody. This giveaway will be held at 250 subscribers. I wanted to do it early. I know a lot of other people wait till 500 or 1,000, but I will also meet giveaways at those mile markers as well. I wanted to do a 250 subscriber giveaway because I felt like it would give those who gave me a chance early an opportunity and just a better chance of winning. So I wanted to do one early, right away. And I figured 250 would be a great milestone. So basically, what you need to do to win this, I'm not gonna make you jump through hoops or anything like that. All I want you to do is have watched this video, gave it a thumbs up, left a comment, even just a hi, what's up? Because I'm gonna use a website that goes through and select somebody based off of those. I will do it in a video so that everybody can see who's the winner we congratulate them and um hopefully they'll enjoy it and get to really have some fun with this device because i like i said this is my favorite favorite handheld at this time so that will be going to one of you and i'm excited about that let's get back to my unit and hey i'll even do this if you guys want i know for people color is a major thing and I, I also prefer to have the color of my choice so I'll be really cool with you guys and if the winner happens to like the my units color better than the white 
I'll let him have it. It doesn't matter to me. It's okay. And um, another thing, if you live outside of the country, outside of the United States of America, unfortunately, I will not be shipping a device out to you. But I don't want to disqualify you just because you live in a different country. That means little to me. Um, I appreciate you regardless of where you are. And if you happen to not live within the United States, I'd be willing to cash app or send you the actual money to purchase one of these devices. And so just for you guys out of the country, if that's what we need to do, that's what we'll do. Okay, and um, as far as the current price on these units right now, I went this morning, and as of filming this video, the lowest that I find them at is about forty nine seventy nine. That's without any discounts or anything like that. That's on AliExpress. I feel like that's a good price for this unit. And like I said, as long as this remains lower than the RG three five XX Plus, then I will continue to recommend this over the RG35XX Plus. I know that the new RG has better specs, but we're not seeing that in gameplay yet. And the firmware on it is not anywhere close to Onion OS yet. So for now, early 2024, the MiU Mini still gets my recommendation over the RG35XX Plus. I do want to touch on who this is for and with that I think that um, honestly that's a great question I think that um, it's for those who want to re-experience childhood favorite games like me that to me was so awesome it was just I can't explain it in words really it it felt so good to just open that up the first time and and honestly like it was just the first time it was just the first time when I opened it the first time and I got to play one of these games it just felt the nostalgia was flowing guys like it was out of this world and um, there's not much stuff you can pick up that puts you back in time. But for me, retro gaming has definitely captured that. Who do I think this is for? I think that's a great question. I think for those of you wanting to relive childhood games or childhood favorites, no brainer, for sure. This is for you. For those that size and portability matters, that Wi-Fi matters, it's for you. Um, have a more strict budget, and you don't wanna purchase a $100 retro, maybe it's your first one, you don't really know if you're gonna use it that much, it's for you. New to retro handhelds, again, you. Collectors. And last but not least, it's also for whoever happens to win that giveaway. And that's about it. So, in closing, in closing, I'd like to thank all of you gamers for your support and also the content creators that come through and show love and support. To me, that's priceless. I really appreciate it. And um, showing love is really important. We all got to start somewhere. So, throughout the existence of this channel, I will always show love to other channels. I will always give them call out, shout outs, because, man, we learn from each other. None of us are better than each other. Some of us got to this before others. I have a big family. I have four children. I have a fifth child on the way. I could have started this 10 years ago, but I put my family first, and, um, I'm not upset about that. Priorities come first, fun comes second. Um, I also want to give a shout out to my brother Alberto out in Missouri. He's always been more than generous to me. 
And not only did he gift a Mac Studio to the channel for the edits that you're seeing now, but he also gives me great feedback when I need somebody to listen to. He critiques me without bias. And for that, I really love that homie. For real, for real. As for you gamers, I love y'all too. And that's it from Too Loud Tech. Remember, you're listening to a friend. And thanks for another great opportunity to share what I love with you. I'm out.